I'm shocked. I predicted a seven figure judgment, but for Donald Trump to be hit with an $83 million verdict, that's unprecedented. It's unbelievable. And really, you're talking about a staggering difference from Gene Carroll Part 1, which, of course, resulted in a $5 million judgment. Donald Trump likes to always talk about how great of a businessman he is and how he's worth billions of dollars. He likes to talk about the Trump brand. But in this particular case, that argument actually hurt him because when it comes to punitive damages, one of the important elements the jurors are to consider is the net worth of the individual and how much damages to award to punish them. So obviously, a high net worth individual merits a higher punitive damages award because they're supposed to be punished in relation to their net worth. I think what resonated with the jurors is Kaplan's closing argument in which he said that Donald Trump doesn't respect the law. He believes he's above the law. Even after it was determined that he sexually assaulted Carol, he defamed her immediately after the verdict. And I think it's the rule of law and Trump's unwillingness to follow the law was the reason that the jurors punished him. Trump not showing up to the beginning of trial, Trump leaving closing arguments today. No one wants to serve as a juror and their time is valuable. And when you see that the parties to the case don't respect the jurors or the jurors time, that's something that can cause jurors to return these types of runaway verdicts. That's why as lawyers, we always advise our clients to respect the judge, respect the jurors, because if not, this is exactly the type of backlash that they may face. But really, the biggest part of the damages in this case was the $65 million punitive damages award. That is the award to punish Donald Trump, not to make Carol whole, but to send a message to him that this type of conduct will not be tolerated. Trump must be infuriated with the result in this case. His lawyer, Alina Haba, frankly, did not do a good job. Her lack of trial experience showed in this case when she was repeatedly chastised by the judge, Judge Kaplan in this case. And in addition, the defense was really playing with one hand tied behind its back. They really couldn't argue that the assault didn't happen. And they tried to minimize the harm to Carol, saying that she actually enjoyed the fame that she received. Well, that sort of victim shaming really blew up in their face. I don't think the jurors liked the fact that they were attacking or saying that the victim of sexual assault actually enjoyed it or benefited from the exposure. Trump, of course, has said and will continue to say that this is all a witch hunt and that it's politically motivated. But this really isn't. This isn't a criminal prosecution. This is a civil lawsuit brought by a private party. So that argument doesn't hold any water. If Donald Trump can't pay, then Carol and her lawyers will have to enforce the judgment. And there's a few ways they can do so. They can garnish wages, they can levy his bank account, or they can attach and sell his real property. So imagine a situation where Carol's lawyers are attaching Trump Tower or Mar-a-Lago and foreclosing upon it to pay this debt. They will be able to enforce it. Can we have a few words, please? Can you come to the mics, please? Can you come to the mics, please? Can everyone, everyone identify themselves, please? Can you have a few words, please? Damn it. Why don't Count Emilio? Why don't Count Emilio? 
How do you feel, Miss Carroll? She's in the car. Oh, right. Right. She took 100 million. She feels like going home, she said. glad you asked me that question. No, I'm not having any second thoughts about representing President Trump. It is the proudest thing I could ever do. What I am having second thoughts about is the license that I stand here with that the people in there are supposed to have. I have not spoken because I respect my ethics while I'm on trial. But let me now speak about what has happened. I have sat on trial after trial for months in this state. The state of New York, Attorney General Letitia James, and now this. Weeks. Weeks. Why? Because President Trump is leading in the polls, and now we see what you get in New York. So don't get it twisted, whoever asked me that question. I am so proud to stand with President, President Trump. But I am not proud to stand with what I saw in that courtroom. I'm not finished. Let me just finish, and I'll take questions, please. Before I walked into court, that judge decided that every single defense President Trump had, we were not allowed to raise in front of the jury. It is in writing, and I encourage the journalists, the real journalists, to take the minute to look at his orders. There was no proof, and I couldn't prove that she didn't bring in the dress. There was no DNA. There was no expert. My experts were denied, two of them, two of them were denied to come in. They didn't bring, let me bring up that Reed Hoffman funded Ms. Kaplan. And you know what we got in there? That my witness, who was her friend, who said that she is a drug addict and the drug addict is herself. That friend I found out in there was paid for by Ms. Kaplan's firm and that is disgusting. That is a violation of everything I stand for and that is why I stand with Trump. And that is why so many Americans are so proud that he is running again and so excited to run to the ballot box. But don't get it twisted. We are seeing a violation of our justice system. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not allowed to be stripped of every defense that you have. You are not allowed to be told that you can't bring it up. And imagine a point where a judge tells the lawyer before your client, the former president of the United States, the leading candidate and obvious no nominee for the Republican Party, before he takes the stand to defend himself, Ms. Haba, tell me the questions you're going to ask in open court and tell me exactly what he's going to respond. And then edited my questions, edited the response he was allowed to give. And guess what my client did? He took the stand. He abided by the rules of this corrupt system that I have seen. We will immediately appeal. We will set aside that ridiculous jury. And I just want to remind you all of one thing. I will continue with President Trump to fight for everybody's First Amendment right to speak. Everybody's a right to defend themselves when they are wrongfully accused and to be able to say, I didn't do it. And to double and triple and quadruple down and say, this is wrong. This is wrong. But we are in the state of New York. We are in a New York jury, and that is why we are seeing these witch hunts, these hoaxes, as he calls them, and this is another one of them, be brought in New York, in states where they know they will get juries like this. It will not deter us. We will keep fighting. And I assure you, we didn't win today, but we will win because the record that was made in there and the behavior I saw in there, some of which was reported widely today, gave us the most perfect record on appeal, and even if I needed it, which I don't, we were stripped of every defense, every single defense before we walked in there. And I am proud to stand with President Trump because he showed up, he stood up, he took the stand, and he faced this judge. And you know what? I'll continue to do so with him. Yes. Of course, I've spoken with the president.
The former president does not live his life in fear, as you've seen every single day. The former president and probably future president will continue to fight for Americans. Thank you very much, everybody. Alina, you look great. You look great. Thank you. I think this is really a victory for E. Jean Carroll and a victory um, in, in no small part for sexual assault survivors. Um, you know, he, here's a woman that even though she was famous, I mean, the enormous power that Donald Trump has and his willingness to harness not only his social media and political power, but his m money and connections um, and and really concentrate that against this plaintiff was pretty much unheard of. And I think there are so many women who did, in fact, um, and who would just say, OK, this is too much. You know, I know what happened, but I'm not going to go for this case because there's too much stacked against me, not only as a sexual assault victim, but one of, of this man. And she said, no, she said, I want my day in court. But in this case, he not only trashed the victim, but he trashed the victim through saying things that were demonstrably false and that a jury had rejected. So I think this is showing victims that they can have their day in court, even against the strongest opponent. Now, it's not always going to turn out the best. But in this case, you know, the jury looked at the facts and believed E. Jean Carroll, and, and they were not going to let... Donald Trump get away with basically ignoring that verdict and continuing to inflict harm on her. What happens in this case is it's going to be appealed um, and it's going to be appealed probably on substantive uh, on the substantive finding that there was defamation and it was malicious. And it's also going to be appealed on the level of punitive damages and whether you know, he's going to win either of those issues or there's going to be a revision to the punitive damages, which, again, are pretty high for defamation case, although, you know, not as high as Alex Jones. That was a billion dollars, um, you know, but there there might be a revision to it. That remains to be seen. But I think in the meantime, we're going to see a lot more of Trump, the defendant. You know, he, he tried to make her feel like trash. And that is a common tactic, not just of abusers themselves, but of people who are invested in, you know, maybe maybe sexist systems that allow abuse to occur is to shame people who have survived sexual assaults um, to impugn their character. This is a time worn tactic. And I think what's so important here is he tried really hard. He tried the hardest and she didn't allow him to do that. And there are quite a few uh, appeals in high punitive damages cases that do result in the damages being revised. So that could happen. But if the judgment stands, you know, he's not going to be in, for example, Alex Jones's situation where he declared bankruptcy because a billion dollars. Um, and, and even then the bankruptcy court said, nope, you can't you can't avoid the judgment. Um, so so it seems this this is not going to bankrupt him if the judgment does go through and all the way through appeal. Um, and at that point, he would have to pay up.